Brian Powell of I Run Far here with Max King after his win at the 2017 Chuck and Nut 50K. Uh, it's a couple, couple days after. We're here down at uh, Solomon Running Academy in uh, Castle Valley, Utah. Ultra Running Academy. You're right. Ultra Running. Damn it. Yeah. Ultra Running Ultra Academy. Running Academy. Some good stuff. Yeah, it is. It's fun. I mean, it's Moab, man. It's uh, <laughs> what, like 65, 70 degrees and no snow. So. No snow. It's perfect. We uh, went over to Fisher Towers today. I live in Moab. I've never been there before because there's so much awesomeness down here. But uh, did you have fun running that today? Yeah, I mean, it was fun. Like, you know, anytime getting into Moab and, and playing around on the rocks and stuff is, is awesome. I mean, it was a short trail, but pretty spectacular in that short amount of time that we were up there. Yeah, so. you, got to, you got to teach some people some... Uh, some uphill running technique? Yeah, I mean, you're talking about guys who have been running a long time themselves um, at the Ultra Running Academy here, and they have a lot of experience and stuff, so I don't know how much I actually taught them, but hey, I tried, you know? I, I gave them the best shot and uh, gave them all the tips that I know, so. But you preface that with, uh, we all have our own techniques and our own strengths and weaknesses and using them, and like, just talking about it with other people you learn something about yourself. Yeah, no, I think you do. And like practicing things and taking tips off of people, um, you know, everybody's got a little bit different thing that they, they're gonna say and talk about. And it might be something small that you pick up on and you can use that in your own running. So that's that's what I hope. And I'm guessing you had some good uphill running at the... Wow, we just got a little... Dude, what happened with the wind, man? More. <laughs> <laughs> Even with a good mic, you have days when you have <laughs> We're going to put this on hold for about 30 seconds because there's a lot of dust blowing. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Jeez, man. What the heck? It was calm the entire time we were talking. Yeah, we just had a nice time hanging out here on the rock for a while, just well, talking about life. Yeah, and, uh, what happened? <clears throat> I got grit in my teeth. Yeah. You needed more grit, I think. Yeah, I needed more grit. You're right. Um, so, yeah, Chuck and Nut, you uh, won and set a course record there. I did. Yeah. Your own course record. Yeah, it was my own course record. Got that a couple years ago. It's, uh, three years ago, I believe. Um, but the conditions were tougher this year, yes? Uh, or different? I, it was, I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's always muddy there. So it's already like so hard to tell like exactly how muddy it was like three years ago as compared to now. Everybody was kind of saying like, yeah, it's a pretty tough year. Chrissy was saying, uh, the race director, uh, she was saying, you know, it's like if anybody's going to get a record, then it's going to be the competition that sets it because it's it's not going to be a course record based on how it's running. So it's, And heck yeah, it was the competition. Uh, from right. the outside, it looked like the competition sure helped things along. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the only reason I signed up. It was kind of a last minute sign up after Formidable. Um, I had a good race there and I was like um, <clears throat> starting to look around and uh, I saw the Chuck Nut list. I'm like, oh shoot, there's like four or five other guys here that is, they're, they're going to bring this race and, and they're going to bring the competition. And I'm like, well, my course record is going down whether I'm there or not. So I better, be, I better show up. Yeah. And so that's why. Um, watching from afar, we weren't up there, but uh, getting reports from Ellie and other folks up there. Um, it looked like you were with Hayden and maybe Sage early in the race. Did, were they setting the pace or who was setting the pace early on? Yeah, I mean, you know, I let I let Hayden set the pace. <laughs> I let him go out, and, and we were um, so we were cooking down the inner urban path. Ten um, k flat road yeah, pavement, yeah. basically. Yeah. I mean, it's not it's not pavement, but it's flat. It's hard. It, there's no traction issues. Um, <clears throat> we were you know ten k. We were cooking down that pretty good. Um, we, I, I think we were probably faster than in previous years. Hard to say, um, but it was a group of six of us there really? um, going down that. And then as we started to climb, um, you know, Hayden and Travis Morrison took off, um, and I kind of hung back in about third. Um, Sage. Um, Sage and Laney were kind of right behind me. So we were kind of all together a little bit, um, just spaced out a little bit, depending on how we were climbing. Um, and then, uh, you know, Hayden, uh, he started to have a little bit of trouble uh, based on the shoes he was wearing. Um, we get that boy some trail shoes and he might do okay. <laughs> Um, and then, um, you know, it got, get, got down to uh, Cleeter Road, um, and then up Cleeter Road, we all kind of bunched back up into a pack of four. Um, uh, Tyler Sigal was right behind us, but it was a pack of four, me, Sage, Travis, and then Hayden. Um, and then you go across that real technical ridge trail, um, and then me, Sage, and, and, uh, and Travis just cooked all across that um, really? pretty good um kind of dropped hayden off at that point um and then it was the three of us up until um 
up until chin scraper basically and then chin scraper right before Real chin steep scraper climb. which is yeah it's like a i don't know i want to say 600 meters half mile climb that's super steep um muddy uh, muddy i mean you can you can run it um if you're feeling really good and it, but it's going to take something out of you were you feeling good I was feeling good. I, I um, ran most of it, could, took a couple steps hiking and stuff just to kind of moderate my heart rate a little bit. Um, got a little bit of time on Sage. At that point, I got into the lead. And then it's downhill, <clears throat> four miles downhill back to the inner urban trail. And, and then, you're a pretty good descender. Yeah, I mean, I think so. I feel <laughs> like it. Um, pretty quick. Used some leg speed on that, that, on that, at that point. And uh, so I took it down the road and I, I just, geez, man. Yeah, ow! <laughs> <laughs> there goes our hotel keys. Yeah. <laughs> um, at that point, like you know, I was just hope, like I, I'm just waiting for the for the flat because I'm keep going downhill. I'm like, when is this gonna end? Like and my legs are starting to get trashed. Yourself, yeah. um, we're I was running about five fifteen to five thirty pace down that I think, um, pretty quick, and then you know hit that inner urban flat six six miles back. Um, all the way into town. Did you have any sense of how much lead you had at that point? About a minute over Sage at the bottom of that hill. So I knew Sage was still there, but I did not know where Hayden was. Um, and so I just booked it as hard as I could for that last 10K and used every ounce of energy that I could. And did you ever have a sense of people cheering for Hayden from behind? Because it got close. It did, but no. I, I didn't hear anything. I didn't see anything. At one point, I looked back. And I must have had a minute and a half or so at least and didn't see anybody. And that was getting toward about three miles to go. So I'm like, okay, like I feel like I've got it. Um, and then you're going to go down to this drainage a little bit and then back up. Um, and then it's another mile flat back to the finish. And going down in the drainage, I ran hard up that. And then the last mile to the finish, I was, you know, I was starting to hurt. I mean, I've been running hard for a long time at that point. And um, so I kind of let off the gas a little bit, not thinking there was anybody there. And, and then there wasn't. I mean, I could see back a ways and stuff. Um, let off the gas. I think I ran like a 6.20 last, After like last mile. like 540s or so before that? 530, 540. I had a 527 in there. I had a 530 in there. I had a 540. So, yeah, I mean, we were for the end of 50K. It's like, that feels like you're running like five minute pace. So even if it closed to 30 seconds, that's because that last mile you did back off and maybe could have punched it a little bit more if you i mean could you have picked it up again maybe a little bit a little bit but not much not much but, <laughs> but yeah you um, weren't gas if i'd off. seen if i'd seen somebody i think i could have picked it back up but um no i didn't know he was there and then i crossed the finish line and turn around and then he crosses i'm like oh oh geez he was close <laughs> oh <laughs> and he he ran his fastest la fastest mile that last mile he ran a 513 or 516 something like that so that was basically picking off that minute of time um that gap that i had um right there so yeah. he was closing fast he was, yeah he was closing. and how long was that after your win at the formidable 50k uh four weeks so good amount of time um those are two really good performances back to back um, after a 2016, which after you've had some pretty spectacular years, 2016 was probably not one of them. Uh, yeah. I mean, especially the last half, I mean, yeah. last half was terrible. <laughs> um, I was pretty proud of like my Olympic trials last year yeah. and then how I ran comrade. So, I mean, I was happy with the first half, all the road running stuff in there. Um, you know, and I just had a rough last half of the year for after all after Leadville. Yeah. I mean, what? Because you've run 100 miles before now at Western States. Like, yeah. what was it at Leadville that really took something out of you? You know, like, I was actually injured after Leadville for about three months. Um, I had some hip issues going on where I would run and my my pelvis would basically just contract. Um, and it, it just it didn't let me stride. It, it didn't feel good. Like, it hurt. You know, I could run a little bit but not train. Um, and that was basically it. So... <laughs> Leadville just it just cooked me for a while and it, I think it was a combination of you know you might say I was running fast maybe a little too fast but I, I think more than that it was actually that, that. course record pace is easy to eh. Winfield yeah it feels super easy <laughs> <laughs> no um, but uh, the altitude and then going up over Hope Pass um, two times I, I, that really got to me yeah so. um, but do you feel like you're back to your normal self now I do, yeah. I, I feel good again. Um, things are like, 
you know, workouts went well this year. Um, I basically, going into these 250Ks, I was trained for cross country more than anything um, and doing all of that, that hard work for cross country, um, <clears throat> the tempo runs, um, the interval work and stuff like that. Um, really prefer, prepared me well to run these two fast 50Ks. And are you doing, I know like there was one year where you did some more like m obstacle racing or mud racing or you, and you had last year the Olympic trials. Are you sort of staying focused on trails a little bit more now? Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. And I mean, more than anything, it's, it's this year was less of like a focus on trails year um, than it was like a, a, a step back a little bit and shorten things up and have some fun. So a lot of the things I'm doing this year are going to be bigger mountain races that maybe I'm not um, <clears throat> I'm not as adept at, but at the same time, I want to get better. And so it's kind of like a bettering year at, at some point too. These 250K is kind of fell on my lap and um, they're kicking off the year really well, um, but it wasn't something that I really had on the schedule. So, you know, I'm happy with the way things are going already. Um, but, you know, we'll kind of see how the, the year progresses as we do with some of those bigger mountain races. So what is next up on the schedule? What do you have in the next couple of months? Uh, a couple of regional stuff. Um, and then I'm supposed to do the maxi race, um, 110K maxi race uh, in late May. So uh, we'll see. Um, and then after that, it'll be Mount Blanc Marathon. But you did just qualify for the, the Trail World Championships you won. It's a 50K-ish kind of, could be a, a race that suits you well. I think it would. Um, it's about. A, I heard it was about six thousand feet of elevation gain in that, and about fifty-five k. Um, so I think it would suit me pretty well. We'll just have to see. You've had a couple of world championships, and that it would be another one because you've gone the mountain running championships. You've gone hundred k on road. It'd be kind of fun to maybe put something in the middle. It would be actually, you know, and, it, and not just in terms of distance, but terrain and yeah, it, it kind of a difference, you know, between kind of splitting the difference almost yeah. between the mountain range championships and the um, and the hundred k road championships. So, yeah, I'm not saying it's out of the question, um, you know, and I I'd like to do it. We'll just, I mean, I got to yeah. see kind of how the year plays out and um, and what what happens. Now, at the last two races, um, you obviously have a choice of Solomon has a huge shoe lineup. Uh, you got like. This S Lab Sense shoes. You got like now the Sense Ultra. What were you wearing out there? I had the Amphibs on. I mean, they were like the most perfect shoe I could ever imagine for a race like that. And I wore them for Formidable and for Chuck and Nut. Um, and it's just uh, you know, it's it's a swim run shoe. Uh, Which so in theory just sounds absurd. I mean, not the base concept, <laughs> but like that Solomon A made a swim run shoe <laughs> for all ten people that are doing this smart. <laughs> but that it's. I think the really interesting thing is that it's actually performing really well for you at 50k ultra stuff, trail ultra stuff. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. absolutely. Well, so it's um, it's basically a sense soft ground. Um, so it's the midsole, outsole, a sense soft ground with the upper, an upper that um, has it's almost like a plastic mesh upper. So it, once it gets wet, it doesn't stretch at all like most shoes do, and your foot starts to slip around when it's wet. It doesn't do that at all. It stays and it it, it, just, it keeps your foot locked down really well. It has an integrated um, soft liner in it that's so not that's gonna not going to slide around and then it has drain holes all the way around the toe box so as soon as you step in that creek like the shoe just like the water just runs out of it and so it dries out and lightens up um, back to its original um, weight like just like that that's some steeplechaser knowledge coming out right there <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like a steeplechase shoe but for trail running so yeah yeah uh, nice well congratulations on your uh, win max and uh, look forward to seeing you out there again yeah thanks